All right. Good morning, Chair Postman, Member Ballendorf, staff and guests. The lobbies are open and the recording has begun. Good morning, everybody. We will convene the uh, Washington State Liquor and Cannabis Board meeting for Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. Um, our first item is uh, some general rulemaking, um, and I will turn it over to Audrey Basic, Policy and Rules Coordinator. Good morning. Good morning, Audrey. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Postman, Board Member Volendroff. Thanks for the opportunity to be here today. I'm requesting that the board approve the CR 105 expedited rulemaking proposal to update obsolete addresses in Title 314 PLAC. So for background, all of the agency's rules are located in Title 314 WAC. And throughout the title, we've identified several instances where obsolete building, email, and web addresses need to be updated. For example, references to the former headquarters building address at 3000 Pacific Avenue Southeast need to be updated to reflect the current building address at 1025 Union Avenue. And there are also email addresses and web addresses that need to be updated. So the proposed rules before you today would ups update obsolete addresses in eight sections of the WAC. And these are listed in attachment A to the CR 105 memo. To develop the proposed rules, we held a series of internal project team meetings with LCB staff across the agency, including public records, contracts, licensing, enforcement, education, and communications. Because the amendments only update obsolete addresses, we did not engage in external stakeholder outreach. However, the public will have the opportunity to comment once the CR 105 is filed. So the, these proposed amendments will ensure that the agency's rules contain accurate address information, which will benefit licensee staff and the public by improving transparency, consistency, and access to resources. So in terms of timeline, if the board approves the CR 105 today, I will file the CR 105 with the code advisor's office and the formal comment period will open. Since this is an expedited rulemaking process, no public hearing is required, but the public is welcome to provide written comments until the comment period ends on October 24th, 2022. After the formal comment period ends, if no substantive changes need to be made, the earliest the board could consider Adopting the final rules would be October 26, which would place the effective date November 26. That concludes my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Great. I don't have any. Anything, Member Volendra? I have no questions, but just to thank you for, I mean, it's not exciting work sometimes to do this kind of detail work, but it's important. It's important work. It's important for the public, and I appreciate uh, your work in doing this. So thank you. Absolutely, and I think we found something that there's no opposition to. Maybe, I shouldn't <laughs> speak, maybe there will be, but uh, okay, with that, uh, is there a, a motion to approve the CR 105 for updating obsolete addresses in Title 314 WAC? I make a motion that we approve um, this. Great, and I second that, and that is approved. Um, and uh, Amos Basic, uh, the uh, uh, rules uh, petition review and consideration. Okay, thank you, Chair Postman, Board Member Volendroff. So today I'm also presenting the staff recommendation on the rule petition the board received from Eugene DeMesa on July 11th. So this rule petition requests the board adopt a new rule allowing cannabis producers to package their own cannabis products and sell them directly to retailers because, quote, without this rule, I-502 producers have no way to get cannabis to retail market. They are forced to sell the processors allowing processors to be gatekeepers to the retail market, end quote. So the issue presented by this petition is whether the board should initiate rulemaking to consider allowing cannabis producers to package their own cannabis products and sell those products directly to retailers. Under the statutory framework in RCW 6950-325, which is the statute creating the cannabis producer processor and retailer licenses, these license types each have separate and distinct privileges. So producers are authorized to produce cannabis for wholesale to processors and other producers, while processors are authorized to process, package, and label can cannabis products for wholesale to retailers and other processors. So this petition request to allow producers to package their own products and sell directly to retailers would be in direct conflict with the statute. Under the current statute, the producer license doesn't authorize packaging or sales to retailers 
While it is possible for a single entity to hold both a producer and a processor license, the underlying license types are still statutorily required to be separate and distinct. The board is not authorized to adopt rules that conflict with statutes, and this petition request would require statutory changes, which could be made by the legislature or through the initiative process, but are beyond the rulemaking authority provided in statute. So for this reason, agency staff do not recommend initiating rulemaking as requested in the petition. I'm happy to answer any questions. Great. Well, no. I have no seeing, question. seeing none, uh, we'll uh, uh, look for a motion to um, accept the staff recommendation to deny the petition that would allow cannabis producers to package their own cannabis and sell directly to retailers. I make a motion that we accept the staff recommendations to deny this request. Great, and I will uh, second in that is approved then. Thank you, Ms. Vesa, appreciate that. Um, this uh, takes us right to our uh, general public comment uh, period. Just a couple of reminders, as always, um, everything is recorded, of course, it'll be available uh, online later. Um, uh, we don't have anybody uh, signed up in person here so everybody is online once you're called on though uh, just be patient for a second uh, while we enable the audio and video uh, so you're able to to be seen and heard um, when that happens state your name and affiliation for the record if you could everybody gets four minutes and only four minutes we actually have a lot of people signed up today so uh, we want to make sure we uh, uh, stick to our, our time limits. Uh, when you have 30 seconds left, uh, Dustin will step in and uh, just give you a reminder of that. Uh, so uh, don't be offended when he interrupts, but that's your 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 warning that uh, in 30 seconds you'll be done. Um, okay, and with that we will start. Uh, the first person on my list is uh, Sammy Saad. Hey, uh, can you hear me very well? Yes, just fine. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I can yep. hear you. Just we can yeah. hear you. Okay. This is uh, Sami Saad, one of the owner, one of the first owner established the medical industry. And uh, you guys know all this industry is only made for one group of people. They all, I, I hate to say white. And and Mr. David and and you have Mr. Jim, the the the, the governor just assigned you here. We don't see no changes. We're still in limbo. We are since, since they passed the social equity and it should fail. I'm, I'm one of the people voted in Olympia. We still, we don't have no uh, uh, a solution. We've been left. If you hit somebody by a car by law, they send you to present the judge first before they settle the case in court. If you guys make negotiation and that's been happened, you guys don't want to help us. We have much respect for you, Mr. Jim. Uh, we have much for, uh, respect for you, Mr. David. I spoke to Garza before that. Uh, not Garza, I spoke to uh, 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 Chris Thompson, and he, when he said we have 3% they black, I say, can you determine how you get, came to the percentage? How many black people there? He said, we don't have no data of that. How you don't have no data, you best the 3%. Mr. David, I, I, I'm not, before that, you make me, I hate Jewish people. I don't hate Jewish, not because you're Jewish. I'm mixed with Jewish too. But the difference is you light skin, I'm not light skin. Almost the each up. I, I hate to say that Uncle uh, uh, Uncle Ike's. He's one of the Jewish, the first people that uh, created the six more six one eight hundred number. So this is just made for people who have money. So me, Kevin Shelton, uh, Libby being pushed away because her husband. They say he's in prison, so they took her. Uh, she won the license, the lotto license. You, you guys didn't even come with the thing. You say, hey, we, we are a few people. We are black. We all been established in this business. You're looking for somebody else? Like what? To be like Mike Tyson or somebody else from out of state? You guys legalize what you should legalize for us here. Second thing is, you guys talking about the packaging earlier. Let me tell you about the packaging. I know you guys denied that. Because a, a lot of farmers, do you know they get their their, their cannabis from out of market out, out of, from the black market and re and repackage it in their own? This is a lot of it. I don't. I shouldn't even say that. Do you know? It's a lot of way. A lot of shop is being uh, is still medical, and we've been closed. I still own my license in the state. I still file zero every month. My license is not expired. I still own a marijuana license in Seattle. 
the mayor don't want to meet with me since two, two mayor, two term. They never meet with me. I have, a, I have, a, I just have uh, uh, went the day before yesterday, the mayor office. Uh, people, they get tired. People now, all this robbery and all this kind of stuff, people frustrated. I'm not, I don't represent them. We, we have in Boston everywhere, everywhere, if you can read. Mr. David, you are not fair with us. The, the, the senator, the governor, the legislator, you guys passed something for you guys, not for us. If you guys want to fix it, why you guys make it hard? A lot of black people, they establish this business. You should guys recognize them first. You guys looking for some, something else. Paula Saldana don't represent us. Ellie Garrett, she disrespected me. Her boyfriend, Nate Nile, he get licensed. They call it Emerald Hayes. Sammy, you have 30 uh, seconds. Mr. Uh, uh, Kevin, I have much respect for Kevin. He's one of their partner and Aaron. They have much respect. It. But they lie to me. They say, hey, after we settle, uh, oppose this law. We, we, you will be us to include it and you will get whatever we will get. I was not with them in a lawsuit. That's why me, Kevin Shelton, all of us, we filed a separate lawsuit. Now we're pushing the lawsuit against the LCB. And we have much respect for the governor. For, for, uh, we did not put him, include him in a lawsuit. Now it's two years. Yeah, I cannot even... Four minutes, please wrap up your thoughts. Are you going to guys give those black... I, me, I represent the African people and the Sudanese American. Uh, uh, Paula Saldana, she said she represents African American. I don't know who he elected her. Nobody elected her. You guys Thank respect you Mr. Saad. Thank you for your time today. Nothing again, it's religion. That's a religion. You guys don't play. Okay. We have to stick to the four minutes. Please be mindful of that. Um, I have, uh, uh, oh, Joe Rammel from uh, New Day Cannabis is uh, signed up next. Uh, Chair, uh, Joe Rammel did register to speak, but is not online today. Okay. Um, I have three people signed up from FMS Global Strategies, and I just thought I would see if you had a preference of who was going to speak first. Well, I guess we don't know because we would have to clear your name. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call on uh, Paula Sardinas. Thank you very much. My name is Paula Sardinas. I'm the president and CEO of FMS Global Strategies. Chair Postman, are you able to hear me, sir? Yeah, loud and clear. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. Um, formerly, I served as a commissioner on the Washington State Commission of African American Affairs. Uh, prior to that, I worked on Senate Bill 5928, which established banking and cannabis. I worked on 2870, 1443, and also did a 50 state resolution to declassify cannabis for NCSL on the federal level. Um, we have previously filed our testimony with uh, the governor's office, with the Washington State Senate and the legislature, representing 714 people that identify as Black and African American in cannabis pro bono testifying here today because we've seen some things that we have a little bit of concern with in the social equity program. I'd like to start by thanking the Washington State LCB for availing themselves and work, working hard on 12 steps that I did provide um, and some information for how they could do better outreach with the community. I think our concerns are that not all issues impacting black and brown Washingtonians can be couched under social equity. For us, it's about the numbers. 556 licenses have been issued since cannabis became legal recreationally in Washington state. We believe that there are approximately nine retail stores that are owned by people that identify as being black or African American, which is 1%. The way that the rules are being drafted, there are approximately 40 licensing opportunities of which only 16 are operable. That means that 24 people would be issued a license in an area of ban and moratoriums, which they cannot use. This continues to be a problem because that would bring the industry ownership to only 4%. We believe that that is neither equity or equality. If I were to simply take the list of folks that we interviewed and submitted to the governor's office and to Senator Karen Kaiser, um, the chair of the Senate, who were looking for a license, 16 licenses would not even be 5% of those applicants. And so as you move forward to look at the program, I would, I would ask you to posit a couple of things. 
there are longstanding issues that existed within the Washington LCB before Mr. Postman became chair that are systemic and structural. Social equity does not answer all of those problems and those issues, and I have two clients that are going to testify here today. There are pioneers and former dispensary owners that either did not get through this process, so they never received a classification, or there are people that made it through the process that were ranked one, two, and three and still don't have stores, or there are people that got through and received title certificates for stores that the LCB, I believe, knew were going to be clearly inoperable. The rubric as it exists today will not fix many of those problems which led to advocacy and protest and outrage. To say that someone has to be low income to, to qualify is a good qualifier, but it also assumes that black people are, mon are a monolith and that everyone is low income. It doesn't properly address all of the issues of the community by saying black, there are people of African descent, Eritrean descent, African American descent, and they hail from different areas that may not be in the DIA that you are looking at today. And so what we would caution and ask the LCB to do as you go through the rulemaking process is to make sure you're casting a wide net and a deeper swath of voices and you are hearing from some people that have well, never spoken seconds. publicly. Thank you, Chair Postman. Um, Hanuk and Philmon are going to speak today because they are in such a category. They have been impacted by the rules of the LCB and they don't fit into the social equity category, but they have issues with the LCB that need to be resolved. Thank you, Chair Postman. Thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Board Member Valderoff. And thank you guys for the opportunity to always speak with you and to work with you collaboratively. Thank you. Um, next person I have uh, signed up is uh, Hanuk uh, Abraha. Hi, can you hear me okay? You bet. Hi. Um, appreciate you taking the time. Uh, my name is Fanuk Abra, and I'm a cannabis retail licensee. I have uh, been in the industry for multiple years, and I am an African American male. I'm having a lot of issues with the way that the social equity program has been written, uh, especially related to the title certificates. We've held title certificates for multiple years now and have been trying to work with the LCB to, to get these turned into licenses, to get them relocated, to have any sort of solution, and, and none of it has worked. So now, like, um, now what the Liquor Board is saying is that we have to go back through and apply under the social equity program, which we do not qualify for. Um, if, if equity and diversity is the goal of this, then you know, it, there needs to be multiple solutions for people in our situation. We've been operating under the rules for over six, seven years now, and we have stores that are costing us money and time, and we're unable to operate them. You know, I, I wanna see diversity in the industry. I wanna see multiple people in this industry that aren't represented, but I can't, I can't allow for or agree to something that's gonna discriminate against my opportunities as well. That's really all I had to say today. And uh, I hope we can find a solution that doesn't include us suing the Liquor Control Board or us having to sue the program. Great. Thank you for your comments. Um, next sign up is uh, Philmon Naguz, if I pronounced your name right. Uh, Chair, we did get a registration request for Philmon, but he's not on. OK, um, then uh, we will move to uh, Libby Marshall. Uh, Chair Libby did register to speak, but is not online today. OK. Um, Christopher King. And same situation, I did see that Christopher King registered to speak last night, uh, but is not online today. OK, Kevin Shelton. Good morning, am I on? 
Yeah, you bet. Good morning, everybody. This is Kevin Shelton. Um, I'm one of the uh, founders of Life Tree Collective in Skyway, Washington. And I'm one of the business owners that was forced out by the Washington State Liquor Cannabis Board unlawfully and illegally. Okay, so back on July 21st of this year, um, it's going on about a month, um, I exchanged emails with Garza about some clubs that I was made aware of, uh, medical cannabis stores that are not licensed by the LCB that are operating, um, uh, notably, what is this, uh, Vincier Cannabis Club in Tacoma, and there's some others out there. Um, he, Garza said he would get back with me, and I haven't heard anything. Mr. Postman, in the last board meeting a couple of weeks ago, you said you'd get me uh, get back to me. Um, I haven't heard from you guys. Why are, why are these um, unlicensed medical cannabis clubs allowed to operate, and we cannot operate? That's a question. Okay. Well, um, yeah, we're not going to do Q and A here at this point, but um, we'll uh, make sure somebody's in touch. All right. The next person I, I have. have my time. Oh, I thought you were finished. Go ahead. Oh no. I mean, these are yeah, important not... issues. You, you, you guys are, are claiming that you want to be transparent with the people, but there's more people that want to know this um, than just myself. Um, these clubs, specifically Vincere, was opened up after we closed our doors in 2016. This place opened up. You guys have been there on multiple visits, and, th and they're still operating. They're being allowed to operate. That's not transparency with the people. Where's the equal pr uh, protection under law? You guys are not operating in good faith. So why should we even have to be here and reduce ourselves to less of, than a man and beg you for something that's already ours that you stole? You see what I'm saying? Why do we even why do we even have to listen to you guys? You guys are not law enforcement. But you're acting like law enforcement. You guys haven't received the basic law enforcement academy training. You guys are, don't have peace officers. Now that's all I have. Thank you guys. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, uh, Mike Asai. I think so. I'm talking about the money though right now. Oh, okay. I think let, let's skip to Peter Manning if he's with us now, and then we could go back and back to Mike. See him either. Man. No. Okay. Let's keep. Um, both of you a sec there. We'll look again in a second to see if Mike has joined us, but I don't see him listed. I may not have thought the meeting would move this quick. Okay. I'm afraid not. We will have to try to connect with them next meeting. See anybody else uh, signed up. Um, OK, that takes us uh, to the end of the agenda. Um, anything for the good of the order, Member Volendorf? I have nothing today. Thank you. All right. With that, we will uh, adjourn the board meeting for August 17th, 2022. Uh, we'll be back next week for a caucus meeting on uh, Tuesday, I expect. So have a good day. Thank you. Bye.